Muhyiddin Musa is one of the volunteers trained by conservationists on how to cultivate coral precincts in Kenya's south coast. Musa and some divers have been replacing destroyed coral reefs with new ones in the Indian Ocean since 2014. They have created underwater gardens. The program is funded by boat operators. The corals have really improved our livelihood here in Wasini Island, famous by making it a tourist attraction. It has developed our community because we now have many visitors who want to come and see how we are transplanting corals at Wasini. They come in large numbers. Corals have a plenty of fish. Before we started planting corals, we used to get about 2,300 kilos of rabbit fish in a month and about 800 kilos of snapper. But since we started cultivating corals from 2014 to 2015, we have seen an increase in the catch from 3,000 to 4,000. We are now getting about 4,600 kilos of fish. About 20 kilometers away, another project at Gazi Bay is helping residents preserve marine life. The Mikoko Pamoja community organization is gaining cash while conserving mangrove trees for carbon storage. In 2013, the group signed an agreement with the Kenya Forest Services KFS to sell carbon credits for a period of 20 years. They are also to plant 4,000 mangrove trees annually to replace the harvested. Mangrove are a home for fish, home for other wildlife, and they are important for shoreline protection, and more so, there, is a, there are natural resources that people harvest for firewood and energy. The trees absorb carbon dioxide, which is the main greenhouse gas, from burning of fossil fuels and stores it in their roots. Their growth can also help counteract the effects of rising sea levels. Here in Gazi, we get 1.5 tons per hectare. Uh, that is a carbon stored below ground. And if you add the one which is stored above ground, which is up to 500, you are talking about 2,000 tons of carbon in the system. So you can imagine when you have such a rich ecosystem, that when that ecosystem is degraded, you emit all that carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. The residents protecting and replanting mangroves on over 1,000 hectares sell 3,000 tons of carbon credits a year to international buyers for about 5 to $6 a ton. The money goes into financing more forest protection projects and the community dwellers. According to Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute, mangrove forests also slow down coral reef sedimentation and protect coastlines for severe weather events. However, the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, reports that in the last 100 years, one-third of the world's mangrove forests have been lost up to five times higher than the average deforestation rates. In the last 100 years, we've lost at least one-third of the world's mangrove forests. Um, they're, actually, they're being lost at a rate at three to five times higher than average deforestation rates of other forests. So these are very vulnerable ecosystems. Coral reefs um, are also very vulnerable, especially to climate change. Um, even small changes in temperature over a sustained period of time can cause mass mortality and the, the, you know, the, the bleaching and death of many corals. Um, and in the last 30 years, we've lost about half the world's live coral cover. Um, so these are astonishing figures. In, in very short periods of time, we have lost a you know, large significant proportions of the world's mangroves and the world's corals.
Kenya has committed to reducing emissions of climate change in gases by 30% by 2030. Besides planting corals to safeguard marine life, these community conservationists are also on the right shows, making sure that the nation's vision comes to life.